Hi, I'm Ben Metelopol, and today I'm going to be walking you through our Getting Started Guide. Let's dive in. So our Getting Started Guide is available on goteleport.com, Docs Getting Started, and it will cover you through all the steps for setting up Teleport on a Linux host. Before we dive too deep into the setup, I'm just going to give a quick architectural overview of what's going to happen here. I'm going to be setting up Teleport on a DigitalOcean uh, Ubuntu VM. This will include the Teleport proxy or the node. In my case, uh, there's no firewall rules needed, but if you're using uh, AWS security groups, you want to open these ports. We're going to also need a domain name. Um, I have this domain name, ashwood.earth, but teleport.example.com. And we're going to use a new feature in Teleport 6, which will get TLS certificates for us. And then towards the end of the tutorial, we're going to connect another host to our central Teleport instance and connect to it um, using the TSH client. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, so first up, we need the Linux host. I'm going to create a droplet here. I'm just picking the smallest instance, which will be perfect for this demo. I'm going to be connecting a SSH key because I'll be SSHing into it to bootstrap this instance. If you're interested in using Terraform, I have another video on that. Um, okay, so we're going to wait for this to um, bootstrap and install. First thing we're going to do is we're going to download Teleport's public keys to this instance. Once it has been installed, let me get my uh, terminal. Let's create a new window. Okay, so uh, this has now been set up. So I'm now in the digital host machine. Let me move things up, make sure it's all visible for you. Okay, so let's go back to the getting started guide. So we need to add the key. I'm gonna add the app repo. One of the benefits of these packages is that it also includes our system D unit, um, which we would recommend if you want to set up teleport to be persistent on the host, um, and then it does things like if your system restarts, Teleport will automatically start with the correct file config. It's going to run an update. And then lastly, we install Teleport. And you can see 6.0.2 has been installed. It's just setting it up. And Teleport version, you can see we're running uh, 6.0.2. And then we have this helpful help command. Um, in which you can learn a bit more. So next up, we're going to configure Teleport. So we have this uh, Teleport configure flag, which I'm going to put into my scratch pad here. Um, so we're going to do Teleport configure. We're going to use this new Acne flag, which is going to get our TLS certificates for us. Because it's using Let's Encrypt, I need to add my email address. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. And then lastly, this cluster name is important. It also needs to be the same domain name that we're going to use later. I have this domain name, asteroid.earth, but I'm going to be putting on a subdomain uh, to call carbon and then driving it out to a file. So let me go back to my terminal. So you can see um, we have the file written out and um, this will work out of the box. But you can see that this is all being configured. It's, it's going to be running on carbon.ashroy.earth, and um, we're using Acme. So um, next up, we need to secure the endpoint. Because we um, have this set up, we need to sort of connect our DigitalOcean host to the fully qualified domain name. So if I come into my DNS settings, I'm going to be adding a new record, carbon, a, and the IP address of my DigitalOcean host. If you see here, we also recommend adding a star dot. Um, this may be sort of like new to some people setting up DNS. This star will mean will capture everything under that subdomain. So in our case, it will be, let's say, foo, uh, foo at dot carbon dot asteroid dot earth. 
and we use this to proxy applications for application access. Okay, so that's been updated. And then if I come back to my terminal, we set this little tip here to check that um, the DNS records have been propagated. And yes, it looks like it has been propagated, so we can start out one now. So we have um, you know, some useful information here about Teleport booting up and getting running. Um, I'm actually going to open another window and SSH into the box again for running the next command. So now we can access our uh, instance using our example carbon.teleport. Asteroid of Earth. Okay, and you can see that this instance is up and running. Okay, um, let's see what we need to do next. So we have this login form here, but we don't, Teleport doesn't provide any default logins for security. So the first thing we need to do is create a user. So we're going to create the user and set up second factor. So here we're going to create a new user called Teleport Admin. It has these roles, editor and access, and it has some uh, logins. So in my second window, you can also see that um, because I have kept this window open, you can see what's happening with the instance. This is very helpful for debugging. And then it says the user's been created. To share this link, it's valid for an hour. So uh, now I can um, set up Teleport. And I'm using Google Authenticator to scan this barcode. We support Authy, um, basically any second factor um, tool that you have will work. Okay, so I'm now in, and you'll see, because I set up Teleport in this mode, this is both the proxy auth and a node. Um, and so if I log in here as root, um, this is the same machine that I was logging in with my local terminal here, uh, SFO number one. Okay, so there's um, some interesting things here to start off with. You can see we had these principles these principles are used to match Teleport users to um, Linux principles. So if you're using uh, AWS, often EC2 is a good default user. <clears throat> but in my case, because it's an uh, Ubuntu instance, we don't have EC2 user available. So let's keep going. We've configured this. We have a little bit more information about um, OS user mapping. Um, next thing we can do is um, install Teleport locally. If you're on Mac, we recommend downloading this package. Um, we have Windows. I'm on Linux machine here. Um, I already have it downloaded and set up. But uh, so you can see I'm using uh, this distro called Pop OS. Um, so I can do uh, TSH version. And TSH is this tool which is sort of similar to SSH, and we use this for collecting and gathering certificates. You can see I'm actually on a slightly older version, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, download the newer version. So we just download it. CD teleport. Okay, so now um, we should have, yeah, there it is, 601. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to access the Teleport cluster that I have here, but from my local machine. So in the example here, we have TSH login. So it's, it's uh, tsh login, 
proxy equals uh, carbon dot. And then we're going to pick the port we set up on, on HTTPS, it's 443. And then user is going to be uh, teleport admin. Okay, let's give it a second. Okay, um, now it's just asking for the password. I'm going to add the um, token in here as well. Okay, maybe my password was incorrect. Um, you can actually see it's in valid username because I already had these logs open on my machine. Double check things. And the token again. Okay. So now I have access to this cluster. Um, you can see there's a few that I've already configured here, but my current profile is on carbon earth And I logged in as teleport admin. I have these roles, um, keeping existence enabled. Um, and it's been configured for uh, 12 hours. So what this means is out of the box, teleport will issue users a certificate that's valid for 12 hours. After that 12 hour period, they'll need to log in again to be able to access machines. And so this is a change from, let's say, SSH public private keys, which you can always use. You always need to reissue either through your second factor or through an identity provider to get your cert. Okay, so um, let's do a few things with TSH data we've done. Um, let's do uh, TSH LS. And so you can see here, we have the same instance we saw on the UI. Um, we can do things like tsh ssh root at this host and um, you know we can run htop and what's pretty cool about teleport is i have this running on my local machine but if i log into um, the teleport you can see that this session is active and this is the one from a few seconds ago and if i join um, I'm joining through the Teleport UI, but I'm also can see what's happening on my local host. Um, so that's, um, and then I've exited. So do like echo clear. Actually, if I just put this down a bit, you can see uh, I'm like typing. And what you can do is you can like invite multiple people to sort of pair and um, use Teleport, which is a very powerful hello world. And then let's exit. So now disconnected. Okay, so next up we're gonna add a node to the cluster. Um, start by creating a new droplet, another small instance, and I'm just call this uh, teleport node. And what we're going to do is we're going to use um, this admin tool, which is sort of the third tool in Teleport's command line tools called tcuddle. tcuddle can be ran on the auth server. And if you have certain permissions, it can also be ran locally. Um, so I'm on this host where I created the Teleport user. I'm also going to create a token here. So what we've done here is we've created a invite token and this invite token can be used within a 60 minute period for nodes to join the cluster. Here we have the auth server private IP address. In some setups, this could be if you have a teleport cluster within like a VBC and that IP address is only available during that uh, ice network isolation. In my case, this uh, private IP isn't accessible. So I'm gonna change this to the address of the proxy, then it's going to dial through the public proxy to the auth server. So let's go back to my scratch pad here. And I'm going to just change this to uh, and then port 443. See if this host has been set up. Yep. Okay. 
being set up. And open another window here. And so we need to do the same uh, install procedure again. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to um, add the repo, configure and set up teleport. You know, like say if you're using AWS, you might want to bake an AMI that has teleport pre-installed or have some other automation that installs teleport um, out of the box. But as we're just going through the getting started, it's good to know some of the details of uh, how Teleport works. OK, so now on our, our Teleport node, you can see that it's been set up. And if we go back to my command here, it starts. And you can. this is an example of starting Teleport with uh, command line flags, it can also be started with file configuration as we did for our main cluster. So if I come back to teleport cluster itself, you can see that we now have the teleport node. And I can log into the teleport node um, and do everything else um, that I would want to do otherwise. Okay, so we have configured it. Let's come back down here. Um, the instructions are the same if you want to add a application to your cluster. I'm going to skip this and add this into another video. Um, but this is sort of a, a good place to end our getting started guide. From here, I would recommend checking out our GitHub SSO integration, which is included in our community edition. Also inviting uh, team members. In Teleport 6, we have the ability to also use our UI for creating new users add them to roles, um, make setup kind of easier for you. And um, lastly, our admin guide has good in-depth details into Teleport certificate authority, Teleport cluster, everything else that you'd need to use to set up a configure Teleport. If you have any questions, please leave comments below. Um, thank you for watching.